Hello, welcome back to Evil Wing Gaming. Uh, we are back on RuneScape again, back on the uh, the Hardcore Iron Man account. And uh, it's not going too badly. Uh, we are um, slowly been making progress. Um, I've really been struggling with um, fletching. As a skill, dear God, is it a nightmare to train. Um, I have tried a lot of different ways to get fletching up. Um, the main one I've been doing is uh, pretty much what you see on screen now, is if you run round and round and round the Grand Exchange collecting logs, you can then flesh them all into bows. Um, I've been trying to work out the best sort of XP an hour rates, because I don't... It's one of those annoying ones, you don't really sort of quote unquote need fletching. Um, but I, I don't know, it's a, a pretty important one. If you're on an Ironman account and intend to use ranged, because you can't just go buy arrows and bows depending on your ranged level and your defense level, you literally have to make your own. So it was a, a necessary evil, unfortunately. But yes. So on a brighter note, though, well, uh, <clears throat> my character does some uh, cool fletching examples in the background. Not. Uh, what we've got planned coming up. Okay, so um, there's a bulk of this uh, video, which is the first sort of half of it is literally just about what stats I've been focusing on recently. Obviously, the primary ones being woodcutting, fletching, things like that. Um, I then smash out a few quests um, just to try and get unlocks and things as we go along and get you know get some of the obvious storyline stuff out that I've done before. So we're at a point now quest wise where I think all the quests that have been completed on this Iron Man account are all the quests that I've ever actually done. And pretty sure I got to the point basically where my original account was almost now. Um, the combat skills were way higher on my main account and the, the sort of secondary skills and things were way higher. Um, but roughly were quest wise were where we were on my original account all those years ago. Uh, as you can see though, I uh, using the room metric stuff, I have actually been trying to keep an eye on, on what's working, what's not working, and how my experience is going, etc. Um, and all in all, it's not going too bad. Um, I mean, if you order them by level like I've done there, you can see that we've got, you've got mining, room crafting, fishing, crafting, wood cutting, smithing, cooking, and magic being the sort of top tier skills that I have at the moment. Um, there's a bunch of skills at the bottom which I have not focused on at all and basically what I want to do is I want to get my characters ranged combat skills up but hence what I was on about to do that I need to get the fletching level up so I am unfortunately backed into a corner with having to do the fletching there's sadly not a way around it Iron Man accounts, you want to do it, you've got to provide your own bows, your own arrows, bolts, whether you're using dual wheel crossbows or not. Um, I must admit, that is a style that I have yet to play in RuneScape ever, the, the dual wielding crossbows approach. So I'm, I'm actually going to uh, do some dungeoneering. Next episode will be literally dungeoneering, and that's how I'm going to rank up my ranged combat. I've got myself some, uh, I think, up to heavy, heavy leather. Uh, I'm going to make some heavy studded leather gear now that my defense is level 30. Um, so the bonuses from the gear should be okay. So I'm going to get myself some heavy studded um, leather. We're going to go dual wielding crossbows. And I'm going to work my way through... Um, Dungeoneering. Having said that, of course, there's not much point getting uh, studded leather unless I intend to fight in range mode outside of engineering, since engineering is completely self-contained. 
But it'll be good to get used to it, if nothing else. I need to set up some action bars and things. Speaking of action bars, I would love suggestions as to... I know for bossing and things like that, and for the end game of RuneScape, etc., there are sort of very, very strong reasons to A, use full manual, and B, use very specific sets of abilities that you've got access to, and then just rotate and change per boss, change per what you know, quest that you're doing, change on everything that you do. Which is fine for the endgame stuff, obviously I don't know much about it since this is roughly, over the years I've played RuneScape all those years ago, this is roughly as far as I've ever got. Which as you can tell from the skills, is basically nowhere into RuneScape. So, um, any suggestions about any articles or Reddit posts or wiki pages where I can get decent ability rotations, I would be very grateful. Just get a decent uh, decent setup for single add melee, two add melee, dual wields, etc. for all the different um, combat types will be good, just so I don't have to think, really think about it too much going forward. And then I can adjust it when I start trying to do mini bosses and things like that later, assuming I still survive that far. Uh, but yeah, I picked a bunch of flax as well, so I've got a bunch of flax picked and, and saved. Um, but it'll spawn up into bowstrings. And I literally just sat, I don't know, I must have burnt three, four hours today doing doing all the, the, the fletching work. It was just a ridiculous grind. Trying. That's why I swapped quests again. I just got so, so tired of doing fletching stood at a bank. I mean, the stood at a bank, stood at some trees, stood at... I was <laughs> just doing fletching. But yeah, so hopefully now I've got the base skills up. Next episode is going to be a lot, um, a lot more uninterrupted gameplay footage, um, probably with uh, live commentary as opposed to post commentary added over the top afterwards. Just because it's going to be a lot more entertaining, Dorina. I think I'm only at level room uh, floor seven. I think by the time I'd finished yeah, bashing out all the complexities. So, um... I didn't want to waste everyone's time with uh, complexity 1 on the floors, so I just kept going down the floors until I'd reached maximum complexity, and then left it there. But yeah, so it's going to be it's going to be good to, uh, to try and get a little bit more uh, sort of active content from the, uh, the RuneScape. I did the live stream the other, the other day. Which was literally just me trying to skill up. Uh, it, was, um, it was just to try and sh give an, an idea of how much time goes into the game between the proper episodes. I mean, these episodes are only sort of 15, 20 minutes long, I'm trying to keep them at. And you'll see in that live stream, that live stream was nearly two hours. So I'm condensing pretty much per skill, I'm condensing about five hours of, you know stuff that happens in the game just into these 15 20 minute sound bites for you um which which is the sort of the nature of roomscape early on things do progress relatively quickly early on and then slightly later as you get later into the slightly slower as you get later into the game but yes enough of the uh Good old fletching woes. So I've managed to get it uh, to 30, 31 now, I believe. So the fletching is enough to get me to where I need to be on range so that it balances out with my other combat skills. And once I've balanced out with my other combat skills, I'm effectively in the same boat across the board. I need smithing and crafting and fletching all to stay at the same sort of level. But yes, that's sort of the plan, so fairly chilled, dungeoneer, no skilling basically, all skilling next episode is going to be passive, just going to be whatever I gain through dungeoneering. Yes. Yeah. So on to the quest that I've completed then. So, yeah, there's Fletching 30, but, yeah, so quests, I've, um been trying to focus around getting uh, 
say that the main quests that I'm used to having done um, before and the ones that I knew about, I've been trying to get those done. So I did Priest in Peril, which was actually a new one for me. I hadn't actually done this one previously. I don't know whether that's because it was introduced later than I used to play or whether I just never did it. But yeah, we did Priest in Peril, got that sorted. Yeah, I tried to uh, cram as much XP into prayer actually as possible to try and unlock some of the perks. Prayer seemingly is, is, is going to be a bad grind as well as fletching, so... Yeah, so I did that quest. Um, I did the uh, Stolen Hearts one, which obviously took us to uh, took us to the desert, and so I did that one. Uh, I accepted his uh, follow up quest actually as well. So we also did Diamond in the Rough. Yep. So I accepted that one and uh, finished that one off as well. There we go, down in the rough done. Obviously these lamps, was there wasn't really a choice as such for these lamps, and where there was, um, I chucked that one in defence, uh, but the rest were all um, static, and the only reason I chucked that one in defence is because all the other stats had been, all the other combat stats had been given a lamp automatically, and I'm just trying to keep them all balanced. But yeah, I did, did Witch's Potion. Uh, I figured I may as well pick it up and do it while I was doing um, Swept Away. So yeah, that's Swept Away done. Uh, Witch's Potion, Diamond in the Rough, Stolen Things, and Priest in Peril. And then I went ahead and put every single pot of her goulash all into prayer. So uh, we got some decent, decent XP in prayer, sort of, during this episode. I think overall I went from level 12 in prayer to 26, I think. But yeah, just smashed all 10 goulash pots straight into prayer. Uh, you can also see as well from, well, obviously, my inventory content, um, I've started just enough, I've just about got enough money incoming because of all the fletching I've been doing. I've started doing uh, rune runs to, um, you know, like the port uh, shop to get the runes. Because um, obviously you need them for all the spells and alchemy and everything later on. Um, I need to look up at some point where to get talismans from, drop chances, because I've only got three at the moment. The two you start with, and then I got a water talisman. Um, but I need the other talismans to be able to try and sort this rune balance out since you can't just buy them on when you're on an Iron Man account. To be honest, that's that's the biggest um risk so far with the Iron Man account is is not having access to sort of just instant instantly gratify certain requirements that my character has. So it's like, you know, if you want to do magic casting, like I made myself a bat wand and a bat book and then realised I couldn't actually cast any spells with them until I got air runes because the staff I'd been previously using granted air spells for free. Uh, but I made it to 600 overall levels. 600 done now. Uh, but yeah, it's been, it was been a really good session actually. I managed to get, get a lot out of it, even though it was a bit grindy. Um... I mean, between the between the fletching gains and the um, prayer gains, it's it's been a really good episode. So, well, I hope you enjoyed it. As I say, I promise dungeoneering next time. Promise. And I shall see you all next time.